Eric Burgess here. We've been told to find the values of x for which the series converges. We're given this series here, and then we want to find the sum for the convergent x. So looking at this, immediately I'm, I'm looking at this sine raised to the n, 3 to the n, and sine should ring a special bell. Sine and cosine should, because sine, right, is bounded. Sine is bounded. And it's bounded between negative 1, right? Sine can be negative 1, sine x to 1. Now, if we look at this, that's the biggest and smallest sine is ever going to be. So this is only ever going to reach the size of 1 third. I forgot to write the bounds in. It's from n equals 1 to infinity. So we can rewrite this as n equals 1 to infinity of sine x over 3 raised to the n algebraically right that's an okay thing to do and then we've already noticed that sine is bounded so this thing is always going to be converging because sine's never going to get uh, bigger than three ever and because of that we will always be less than one so this if this is our radius right we know if this is r we know that the magnitude of r has to be less than one and we've already discovered that's it's never going to happen that this will ever get bigger. If you really want to, you could rewrite it like this too. You could say that the sine x over 3 magnitude has to be less than 1. And if we do this, we're going to get that sine x has to be less than 3 and greater than negative 3. And we already know that this is, this is always true. And so because of this, we say that the interval of convergence of x is between negative infinity and infinity. No x will be out of bounds. Or you could also write it as negative infinity, infinity in interval notation. So there we go. That's the values of x for which the series converges. It turns out all x, the series will converge. Now next, it wants us to find the sum. So recall that this is a geometric series because it's just raised to n and this would be the common ratio r and so for the first term a that would just be when a is one and so that gives us sine x over three r is the common ratio which is given by what's inside of the parentheses here because it's raised to the n so this is the common ratio we're going to get sine x over three again we know that for a geometric series, the sum is equal to a over one minus r. So we could just plug that in. We get sine x over three divided by one minus sine x over three. Multiply everything by three, because it's kind of sloppy having all those things there. We're gonna get sine x over one minus sine x, whoops, it's not one, multiply by three. We're going to get 3 here. 3s will cancel here and here, and this will be left as a 3. And this is what we get for the sum of the series. So this one at first kind of looks maybe a bit scary because we see the sine x, and we're like, oh, snap, that's a sine x. That's a problem. But uh, it actually made our life really easy because it means, you know, there's there's really no x that can be a problem. And then you see now how we, how we kind of approach it when we want to find the sum, we have a known series formula that will give us the sum for a geometric series. So really convenient. We just use that. And boom. We get the, the sum of the series for any of the convergent x, which in this case is all x. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know, and we'll catch you in the next problem.